So I've just delivered uh, the uh, Dementia Masterclass session, which is an introductory session on uh, dementia then and now, uh, which is actually a, a kind of an overview of dementia. Um, a very difficult session to deliver in an hour for obvious reasons. There are massive textbooks written on dementia. But what I'm trying to give people are the high points of a landscape of dementia. So in other words, what are the subtypes of dementia? How do we go about diagnosing and differentiating those subtypes? What is the dementia syndrome and how do we diagnose that? And why does diagnosis matter? So what is it about subtyping dementia that makes uh, a difference for people? Uh, and I give examples for, uh, for uh, the audience like dementia with Lewy body. It's very important in that subtype of dementia to pick up the Parkinsonian symptoms so that we acknowledge the risks to the patient. Let me give a perfect example of that. In people with Parkinson's disease or dementia with Lewy bodies, there can be instability in the nervous system, in the autonomic nervous system which uh, results in postural hypotension, a blood pressure drop. And that means that when they get out of the chair, their blood pressure drops and they're at risk of falling over. Now obviously if you misdiagnose that, then you miss that risk. And uh, the purpose of delivering this session is to make sure that those kind of highlights of the different dementia syndromes are not missed for people. The purpose of the session is to give uh, uh, a broad but not necessarily a deep overview of these types of, de of dementia, uh, including some of the tests that we might use to uh, examine and diagnose, for example pen and paper tests. Um, one of the tests that we use is called the Addenbrooke's Cognitive Evaluation, this type, the, the, the third version of that, um, and uh, I focus on the strengths and weaknesses of that, and also some of the shorter, perhaps more GP appropriate tests, like the Montreal Cognitive Assessment and even the MMSE. Um, and if people are, I suppose, are aware of the strengths and weaknesses of those, then they can use them more appropriately and be aware of some of the things that those tests might miss. The other thing that I'll sometimes talk about um, and got to cover this morning was uh, imaging. And so neuroimaging is a, a kind of core part of the diagnosis of dementia. It helps us differentiate these different syndromes. Uh, in Manchester, where I work, we have the highest rate of cerebrovascular mortality and cardiovascular mortality under 75 in England. So the highest rate of death from stroke and death from heart attack under 75 in England. And that obviously has huge implications for how we diagnose dementia because all of these people have damage to the white matter in their brain as well as the other dementia syndrome that's going on. So we see very little pure Alzheimer's, we see a lot of Alzheimer's mixed with vascular dementia, very little pure Parkinson's disease, we see a lot of Parkinson's disease mixed with vascular dementia. And that kind of complexity, I think, uh, is, is, uh, warrants uh, the kind of neuroimaging that we do. It's also worth, in the session, addressing some of the advances in neuroimaging. So for example, amyloid imaging and what that might mean down the line for therapeutics. So this morning we talked about uh, amyloid imaging in combination with neuropsychological testing how we're using that in clinical trials in Manchester to, to select out a particular group of people for disease-modifying medications for Alzheimer's. So hopefully that breath talking about future treatments, neuroimaging, pen and paper testing, and the high points of, of the landscape of dementia is useful for people for the rest of the day so that they can put the rest of the detail in context. The idea of the, the, the whole day is that it's workshop-based, it's interactive, and people, uh, if you like, they raise each other's levels of knowledge by, by sharing what they know. We have people who are GPs, geriatricians, uh, community psychiatric nurses, dementia leads, people from hospice-based care. And uh, all of those people have different aspects of dementia knowledge that they have and uh, different priorities. And so it's very important that they're able to see things from each other's prior point of view um, so that they can um, well, be better, more rounded practitioners and not miss risk not miss important things in interacting with the dementia patient. Um, I think the most important thing that people come away with from, this, the, from my talk in particular is that um, the diagnosis of a dementia syndrome should initiate a, a risk assessment and a planning um, about uh, capacity, driving, um, end of life care, palliation, and that people have the opportunity at diagnosis to make a series of life choices, but they still have the capacity to make those choices. And that the diagnosis of dementia is uh, an information sharing, um, often quite traumatic 
time for people, but that it's an opportunity to make good decisions for uh, 